All right, besides the uh, F-16 and the Harrier jet, my next favorite jet is the uh, F-14 uh, Tomcat. Um, so for my next build, I'm going to be building this, the Italiari uh, F-14A Tomcat in 170 second scale. Uh, let's take a quick peek at the kit before I start building. Um, this is the, the manual, uh, typically Italiari from what I've seen in the details. Take a look at that in a sec. This opens up. Nice long instructions. So we have a total of nine steps here. So as always, a little bit of information about the, the plane itself. Uh, sprue map, which is always nice to have, and this one is numbered. And then you have your eight steps. One, the cockpit. Two, the body and wings. Three, uh, the vertical, horizontal, and uh, attaching the nose. Four, the bottom part of the engine. Five, uh, the no nose wheel. Six, the undercarriage wheels, the main wheels. Um, seven, the other half of the uh, main wheels. And eight is assembly of all the weapons. And nine is the uh, putting the weapons on. And then you have the painting schemes. This particular kit has two paint schemes, one for the Nimitz and one for the USS uh, Eisenhower. Uh, the decals this kit came with, they're a little soil dirty in the middle, but I think between this and the uh, AMT kit, Earl kit, I'll be able to get enough usable decals to construct the plane. Uh, decals that come covered a little, a little wax paper. Uh, other than that, it, every, all the parts come in two screws. Uh, the second sprue, which I'll take a quick look at here, has the wings, the stabilizers, and the weapons. Let me just, oops, sorry, excuse me. Let's zoom out. Uh, has the wings, the vertical and horizontal stabilizers, and the weapons, and the pylons, and the uh, wheel gear struts right here. And they all have pretty good detail. Let me zoom back in here. So you can see some of the details of the wings, the weapons, the underside of the wings, and the inside of the wheel well doors. It just has some good amount of detail. You can see there, you can see that there. Struts themselves and the ejection seat. And then the first sprue is a sprue with the body of the plane. Um, I have cut these out twice when I was trying to uh, uh, dry fit them, uh, but uh, you got the two bodies, top and bottom. Uh, you got the engine intakes, you have the wheels, and the exhausts, uh, and the uh, fans, excuse me, compressor blades. Uh, these are the engine nozzles that come with it that one would use. You can see in there. It's not the greatest amount of detail, but it's okay. Nose of the plane. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see it better. So this is the bottom, the nose wheel well. So you got some details in there. Uh, the panel lines are raised in this particular kit. You have the top of the nose wheel, uh, nose section. You have the cockpit tub. Um, there is detail, there is raised details here for the instruments. Let me just zoom a little closer. You can see, a little too close. Maybe you can see that as the light catches all the raised details here on the side consoles on both sides. And the fuselage itself. So you go to your top and your bottom. Again, it's all raised panel lines. You do have texture here uh, for the wings where they swing in. And 
got the tail. Uh, the uh, the air brakes are all molded in, so they're not separate. Same thing on the bottom. They are molded in. They're not separate. Not, unfortunately, not much details here in the main wheel wells. And that's it. And the nose. That's a separate part. Hello okay. <clears throat> again. Excuse, excuse my voice. I have a little bit of a cold. Uh, here we are, back at continuation of the build. I have uh, painted and assembled the uh, front of the plane here. Uh, specifically, what I did, I brush painted the seats and the inside cockpit and the instrument dials and that, you know, so now what you can see in there. All that was brush painted. After I finished brush painted it, I assembled this. Um, and then I put some uh, varnish over it to protect it from handling. Uh, for the two halves here, what I did to glue it, I did one side first. I applied some Tamiya extra thin cement along the edge, squeezed it, held it tight, uh, manipulated it so I had little to no step in here. Uh, then I flipped it around and did the other side, same thing, applied some Tamiya. I uh, squeezed it, manipulated it, make sure I had no step that was as flush as possible. Then I'll go back and I'll clean up the seam that you see there. I mean, right now this doesn't really require any filler, uh, just a little bit of sanding to take care of that. In the nose section, I have I have used some putty and a fishing line weight to give it some nose weight so it doesn't become a tail setter. Uh, for the main body of the plane, put it together according to the instructions. The uh, parts went, back, went pretty easily. You have the top of the wing, you have the bottom of the wing, which goes right in there. Uh, forms a nice natural seam for the, where the flaps and the uh, panel go goes here in the front leading edge. So that fits nicely. Um, top and bottom went nicely as well. As far as the instructions, the way the wings are synchronized is via this uh, bar here, which goes from from corner to corner here uh, inside the wings uh, so you can have the synchronized wing action here <coughs> uh, when I went to assemble the body the way that I did it I uh, used some just regular tape to hold it in place in three spots namely here here and here while that was being held in the spot again using the Tamiya glue I put a bead here on the edge held it together squeezed it make sure it held Turn around, did the same thing here, then I turn around, then I did it here along this edge where the two halves meet, turn around, did that half, then I did the two front parts where they meet here and here, and finally I did the tail. So I didn't do everything all at once, I did it part by part, edge by edge, this way I have the most control over one edge, well that's dry, and I can do the other, the other, and the other. Uh, if you try and glue everything together at once, then it becomes a little bit of a mess. You don't have glue all over, probably get glue in your hands, glue, glue your model, and probably wind up not having a good uh, edge seam um, throughout the model. I um, mean, right now, this doesn't require any filler, just a little bit of sanding to smooth out these edges here, and otherwise, this went pretty well. One thing I did forget, I forgot to drill the holes um, for down here. Uh, before I assemble it. So the way I took care of that to find where the hole went, I took a flashlight, shown it, turned off the lights in the room, shown it through the hole here in the front. Um, that was enough for me to be able to see where the holes were and then I just go ahead and marked it in and drove them out. Uh, now for the intake uh, cowlings here, um, which go right here. Uh, the, I test fitted everything here. Um, let me see this one here on the port side. Uh, there is a little bit of a fit issue at first that you can see there. There's a little bit of a gap. Uh, but, but by careful scraping with the back of the knife, the exact knife, you can see some of the scrapings there. You can get a nice smooth edge there, which I already did here with the starboard um, cowling here. Uh, so you get a nice good um, seam between them with minimum gap. Um, there's still a little bit of gap there, but I know that once I add the glue, the glue is going to melt the plastic, and once I squeeze in there, um, that gap is just going to disappear, and you're not going to have the, any putty, the, any putty whatsoever filler in that area. Just a little bit of sanding uh, to take care of the of the well seam there. Um, 
And again, that's something that I do throughout the whole model. You just test fit, make sure things fit well. If I see something is not fitting well, and then I'll go ahead and do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of scraping, make sure the ports are nice and tight. Then I'll go back and glue. Um, this particular Italiari glue, um, plastic, I found that it's very soft, so it melts pretty well. It reacts pretty good to the Tamini cement, so it melts. Uh, and you can weld the parts very well together. Um, one thing I did notice about this kit, the uh, two horizontal stabilizers, there are the notch in there are the different sizes, so they're keyed in properly. Uh, <clears throat> for the vertical stabilizers, uh, even though they look identical, uh, if you look at them head on from the bottom, I mean from the side here, uh, there is a little bit of a cant leaning one side into the other, so that the vertical stabilizer act leaning just slightly off to one side or the other here, uh, left and right. So make sure you don't put those in the wrong position. So I'm going to go throughout and finish building the model. I'll get it ready for priming. Um, do the same technique when I put this together. I'm going to test fit it. See if I need any scraping edges. Make sure nice and even. Apply the glue. Hold it in tight. Let it melt. And edit here properly. Same thing with the nose. And so forth. Um, I mean, hold, holding it versus taping on this particular model. I mean, the model is relatively small. Uh, doesn't need that much pressure to hold it together. I just find that for this particular model, just holding it manually like this and letting it dry, the glue or set the, the glue set, and then letting it cure uh, uh, for a while uh, is, is fine. I mean, you know, I'm watching TV, I'm doing something else, I'm doing this, so it's not that big of a deal just to hold it together like this. All right, so stay tuned for the next part. Thank you. Okay, it's been uh, about a week and a half, two weeks since the last segment of this video. Um, the build is complete, um, everything's done. A um, couple issues with the kit that I found, um, the, besides the raised panel lines, uh, the engine nozzles, um, I think they're very weak. Um, they really don't fit all that well. Uh, they have quite a seam and a step. Uh, those are two things I would definitely replace on the kit if you happen to have it. Um, the fitting between the front section and the main body section, uh, I do have a bit of a seam, step, fitting issues there. Uh, it doesn't quite fit perfectly. Luckily, the lower section here um, is hidden away by the pallets and the missiles, uh, which is good. Um, so, I mean, overall, it's an okay kit. I mean, I would give it a score of a C. Um, points out for being raised panel lines, the fitting issues with the nozzles, fitting issues with the front section of the body. Um, and uh, my personal um, uh, score to myself how well I did, I'll probably also give it a C. I mean, I don't think I did that great of a job. Uh, unfortunately, I had some family issues to attend to the past couple weeks, which kind of distracted me from really concentrating on putting this kit together. Uh, but oh well, it's not bad. I mean, it's an okay kit. You know, I gave it a little bit of weathering and dirtying it up a little bit. Let's give you a look at the undersides here. And you can see that, and just bring it a little closer there. I uh, did manage to put on almost all of the decals. There were a couple of the small decals which unfortunately just uh, disappeared uh, in the water uh, once I dipped them in. Uh, but otherwise everything else uh, conformed pretty well. Uh, no complaints there about the decals on this. Uh, even though it was a used kit from eBay opened. Um, so that went out pretty well. Um, you know, I could have done a little bit better job with the masking of the canopy here. Um, there's a couple of things here which I did wrong. Uh, for example, the, uh, the sensors here, uh, one of them is drooping a little bit and I was just not paying attention and that's the way it dried. Um, I just decided to leave it like that instead of breaking it and it's getting lost forever. Um, the missile pylons, one of them, I don't know what you can tell here in the video, but one of them uh, is drooping a little bit. Uh, this one is actually raised up a little bit compared to this one. should probably be closer to this one here. Uh, and again, that's my fault. It just was uh, distracted and wasn't paying attention. Um, but otherwise, it's all right. Uh, yeah, like I said, kit, I'll give it a C. My uh, abilities on it, uh, I'll, I'll give it also a C. Uh, I could have done a better job with the kit, I believe. Alright, thank you and stay tuned for the next build.